we've had a chance to talk when you were a player. Uh, we've chatted when you were an executive. And now I get the chance to talk to you as a Hall of Famer. How's that sound? Sounds great, Tim. Uh, not much has changed, though. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's, it's an incredible honor and I just feel like I'm uh, accepting it for a lot of people. So talk about some of these people that, that helped you get to Springfield. Yeah, so many. I mean, starting back growing up in Brooklyn, the first person I wanted to be like was my older brother in the backyard. You know, that's the guy I wanted to try and at some point try and beat him. You know, <laughs> could, could I do that? What was your high school coach like? Well, he's the first guy that even brought up the subject of me playing in the NBA. He referenced Ernie Grunfeld. Yeah. He said, you know, you're about the same size. And he even said, you're probably a better shooter than him right now, which I didn't believe. But, but just the, the fact someone putting that thought in, in my mind um, got, you know, something I, I think I shrugged off right away. Right. But then as I went on to uh, St. John's and started having some success, I kind of went back to that thing. Was there a point yet at St. John's where it became a certainty where you thought, I'm going to make this, I'm going to do this? Yeah, I think I had a really good sophomore season. Things just seemed to click. You know, I started scoring pretty easily and felt confident handling the ball. St. John's was so good, I never even thought about leaving. I, ne I never wanted to leave there. So drafted by the Warriors, your initial thoughts were? Where, where is Golden State? State. <laughs> Do I really have to leave New York? <laughs> I got it pretty good right here. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm from here. I'm, I'm 20 minutes from home. Everyone's yeah. my family. Everyone's at the games. The garden sold out. I'm good. I'll just yeah. hang right here. Um, but over time, it almost flip-flopped. Right. But not, not initially. It was, it was a tough, tough going for me. Um, professionally and personally at first. You know, when I, when I came out of rehab, um, I knew in my mind what I wanted to accomplish. Mm -hmm. I didn't know how it would work out, you know, because you're on a day-to-day -day yeah. deal with yourself and who knows what the future holds. But when I played that first game back and the reception I received from the fans, it really gave me a good feeling about what I was trying to do. A little validation and, and, and some positive reinforcement to go ahead and give it your best shot. And I think it really um, formed a bond between me and the fans that made the, all the things that happened after that even more sweeter. Right. You know, because it didn't happen right away. It wasn't smooth going. You know, they hung with me. I made some changes to a small degree, paid them back, and we just kind of formed a pretty cool relationship. So now with, with Nelly and, and Tim Hardaway's at it, your friend Mitch Richmond is at it, and it's still not just here in the Bay Area, but across the nation. Uh, people still come up to me when I'm on the road and say, geez, I used to love watching those teams play. Yeah, when I look back, I mean, just, even if, I, you know, if the game comes on NBA TV, you just see guys smiling and laughing and playing free and easy. And Tim and Mitch, when they got, when they got together, I don't think people understand how good, how good they were. Yeah. I mean, Tim Hardaway, he could blow by his man every single time down the court and, and get any shot he wanted. But Mitch Richmond, you know, you look at his, his overall career, I mean, he's one of the top two guards of all time. But the, probably the, you know, the thing that really made that work is we had um, different talents, different personalities, and it just kind of meshed together. You know, I don't think we were a real threat to win the whole thing, but for a franchise that was regrouping, it was, it was a really, really good team to do that, to get, to get the Warriors back on the map. It almost seemed like you guys could play and not have a playbook. You guys could go out and just play basketball, and you guys could have gotten results. To a degree, I think a lot of times it looked that way, but I always say too, you know, when you play fast, there's as much preparation as put into it, it's just different. Let's talk about a couple of different guys. Uh, Manute Bowl. I remember one game, we're playing at, at the Celtics. Um, you know, 
I don't know if Larry played that night, but Larry Bird, Kevin McHale, myself, Mitch, Tim, Dennis Johnson, Manute Bowl won that game on a three-point shot. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, God rest his soul, you know what I mean? Manute, one of my really, really dear friends. Shrunus Marshallonis. No one wanted to guard him. You know, you had a guard, he'd hurt you when he was on offense. <laughs> and in one game, uh, Scottie Pippen and Michael Jordan I think someone was on the free throw. I was at half court with both of them. And they were arguing who was guarding Shrunas. And Mike was like, I'm not guarding him. <laughs> and not that he couldn't guard him, he just didn't want to get run over by him. You know, he had those meat hook hands, you know, where you drive by, he just, you know, most guys smack the ball, he yeah. just go like this and take it from you, like, like candy from a baby. Golden State Warriors, what does that mean to you? It's, it's basically my whole NBA career. You know, it's been, Obviously, the majority of my career playing here. Um, I'm going in as a warrior. You know, they ask you to choose two logos, so Golden State Warriors and St. John's. Um, probably the first, when I think of the Warriors logo and, and the audience, I think of Al Adels. That's who I think of as the class, uh, the longevity. And just, you know, the way he handles himself on a daily basis. And I was, you know, I was the GM when I first came to the Warriors. And always just to, just the rock of Gibraltar, you know. He's the one guy that brought a championship to Golden State Warriors. And uh, I, I just look up to him in so many different ways. Nate Thurman, right. another guy just like that in that mold of consistent, class, um, unassuming, you know, humble. I'm talking about one of the 50 greatest players of all time, and, and, and Nate could, you know, walk in the room, sit in the corner, and, and, and be just, just comfortable, you know, just unassuming, like I said, and, and, and humble. Well, the Warriors have, obviously, new ownership. They have a new uh, basketball side, and involves somebody you know pretty well as the, the head coach. What do you think? I love it. Mark Jackson, ironically, you know, my guy from Bishop Lachlan, you know, we go so far back. Um, you know, Mark hasn't coached a game yet, so he's not a warrior yet, but he is their head coach. And, uh, I mean, guy, Mark, we, we, we have a relationship, obviously started through basketball, but we're, we're way close beyond basketball. Uh, families have, have known each other for so long. Joe Lacob and, and Peter Gruber, I think they're going to be wonderful for the Bay Area. I'm, I'm really excited for the fans. I think it's going to be some good changes going on. You know, hiring Jerry West, I mean, I got the utmost respect for Jerry. Who doesn't in basketball, you know? He's a great guy. Uh, but Bob Myers is a guy that I know very well. He's a local, local guy. Dealt with him on the agent side. He's, I got a lot of respect for him as well. He's a good man. So they're in good hands. If I could ever, you know, do anything to help those people, because of you know, the way they've, I've been treated throughout my career. I spent a lot of time and energy. Um, yeah, but I'm, I'm really excited for Mark. I think it's something, it was a long time coming, and I think the Warriors are gonna reap the benefits. You know, I think it's, I think it's a wonderful choice. And uh, yeah, he's gonna do just fine. For those who don't know, Springfield, is, it's a circular building and it has a court in the middle. Are you going to get any shots up while you're there? You never know. <laughs> you never know. It is a pretty cool place, though. It is. I hadn't been to last year. Oh, really? Yeah, I had never been there. And uh, it was really cool. I liked it. I liked the way it's set up. It gives you, you know what's nice about it is you feel like you're in a gym. Yeah, That's, That exactly. makes me feel comfortable. Exactly. It's, it's, it's a museum, but it, it comes from the court. It's, it's kind of how you would like... Uh, most organizations to be. It's really the basketball is where it's at. So the court and everything comes from there. It's about thanking the people that helped me get there. I know, you, and I've been told you don't want to just list people. Right. You're going to just kind of touch on some each each stop along the way, and then uh, then have a big party. <laughs> well, I can't think. You were talking about the the Hall of Fame being like a gym. I can't think of a better place for a gym rat to end up. In a place that has the gym and, and you get the Hall of Fame honor. It's, it's always been a pleasure to talk some basketball. With Thanks, you. Tim. Congratulations. My pleasure. Thanks.